All right, I'm Liam Farley. I'm a stand-up comedian from Paisley. And in my job, I'm used to people getting cheeky with me, you know, hecklers and that. And that's just part of the game. But it can be quite brutal. You know, and I've seen comedians handle it in many different ways. I've seen people try and bring a heckler up on stage. I've seen them try and challenge them to fight. I've seen one guy completely lose the plot, but he was being heckled by his dad. So these things happen. But it's when people get brutal in other ways, like having a go at someone in the street for being different. I don't understand that. Uh, that's why I'm going to talk to Callum and Kev. And I think what they're going to say is going to surprise me. All right, so I'm here with Kev Neary from uh, Aid and Abet and Cam Hutchison from Medics Against Violence. Uh, right, and Kev, you work with Aidan Abet. Can you tell us a bit, a bit about what you do there? Aidan Abet's a, a, a peer-led charity, a people with, with lived experience, uh, uh, who've experienced the criminal justice system, who have been imprisoned and who have uh, experienced substance misuse through the years. Um, and uh, we're all volunteers who are aiming to look at uh, supporting people coming to prison. Cal, what are you doing at uh, Medics Against Violence? So I'm the Regional Supervisor and Project Development Lead um, for Medics Against Violence, um, the Navigator Programme. So I'm responsible for the um, Glasgow Royal Infirmary, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the Royal Alexandra Hospital. Um, on the other side of my role in being Project Development is my role to develop um, initiatives and, and projects that will um, help reduce kind of violence or prevent violence with, with young people in particular. So in a lot of kind of education settings in schools and and um, doing a lot of kind of group work and kind of um, education around about the consequences of violence on your health, on your life, um, and just co-creating that with young people as well. Um, so I'm somebody who's got lived experience as well um, in the criminal justice system, uh, adversity, violence, stuff like that. Um, so being able to be a professional with lived experience gives me a wee bit more an advantage when I'm working with young people um, and credibility, I suppose. Aye, of course, man, definitely. And I think it's, it's oh, it seems, it must be kind of difficult for people who haven't experienced anything like that to look in and be like, where is this violence coming from? So can you maybe like, give us an like, explanation, kind of, where is that coming from with the violence? It's easy to be kind of focused on symptoms when it comes to violence. Um, people see knives, people see kind of um, fights and, and behaviours, and they'll not really get to the root or see the root. But I think Scotland's done amazing to, to bring awareness around about why violence happens. Violence doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's um, kind of perpetuated through trauma, um, through adversity, um, through kind of systemic kind of um, issues that might go on socially within communities and, and um, an understanding through that violence is often happens and we're a small minority, but they commit a, a large amount of violence as well. And, and um, often perpetrators have been victims. I think it's, uh, it's also been about aware, uh, as Callum said there, and, and you know, the, the, where violence actually comes to. But when uh, young people who are brought up in that environment uh, are fully emotion and they act out on that emotion, you know. Um, so it took me a lot of years to work out that people didn't make me angry. I made myself angry for how yeah. I perceived the situation, how I perceived a comment how it made me feel insecure, judged, jealous, you know, stuff like that. When uh, somebody makes a comment to you, how you perceive it, you can get a physiological response, you rage and, and tighten up. Somebody else can say something else to you and you get a response to laughter. It seems to be like younger people that are most likely to kind of do this type of stuff. Is that the case? Is it a lot of that that's coming from? Like, who is it that's kind of doing this type of stuff? It's, um, there is, certainly if we're talking about prevention, then we've got to be working with young people and we've got to be working with young people as soon and as early as we can um, so that we're no, like myself, 25, still behaving the way I was when I was 12. We always talk about attention seeking, it's actually connection seeking and they're just no, they're not getting that for somewhere else in their life and they know if they arrive at a place where this is going to get bring me to the forefront and get me a bit of attention, then I can start to connect and I think that's what's void a lot of young people right now is they've not got a lot of healthy connections within their circle, within their life. They talk about it takes a village to raise a kid. So it's not just the police's kind of, it's not just them who are responsible. It's not just our organisation, Kevin's organisation. It's actually everybody because young people are watching everybody. Where they are, you take a young person to a football game and they see how you behave for 90 minutes. They think, right, that's acceptable. Then. I can do that. They don't really take into consideration that that was just an expression that was heightened by the football. But that person doesn't really hate the, the person sitting at the other yeah. side of the stadium but the behaviour is reinforced to the young person 
it's all right to act like that because I seen an adult acting like that in front of 59,000 witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. So I can just do that in my community and I can go and express that. And the message, the subtle message that's getting passed to your young people is it's all right to hate. It's all right to despise. It's all right to be derogatory. It's all right to, it's all right to bring somebody down to make you feel better. And then we wonder why we're young people are going about and using words and expressing words like, I hate them. And or they, they, they try and belittle people in front of their peers to make themselves feel better. That's came from somewhere. And I don't think they're teaching hate in school, but I think in everyday life they're seeing it. I I think it's that thing as well. Like as soon as, as soon as someone says, Oh, I hate you, aye. you immediately are like, Well, I hate you too, aye. aye. So aye. it's that aye. problem of Absolutely. like it's just hate begets hate kind of yep. thing. So it's it's the thing as well is what we find, especially in young boys uh, and men, is the fact that they'll know uh, express their emotions and know express their feelings and they can be egged on. And if a, a, a young guy is going about um and girls as well, but predominantly young young men who will not express how they feel because they'll be classed as weak because he's going to say, ah, yeah, look at you, and they egged on, and then that, that causes the frustration and the emotion, and then they need to act that out, and, and they need to act differently to show that I'm no weak because you're indicating that I'm weak, you know? Do you know, I had to go out and hang about with other people <laughs> to find out how their, their views and opinions, they can all do it at the click of a button. That's how I always talk about their phone being the most, ed most offensive weapon they'll probably ever carry. Because we've all got one and we've all got the power to hurt somebody for the comfort of the house. You're talking about these boys and they're like, you're, let's say when they're getting older and they're going up to town, you know, they're maybe having a bit of drink or something like that. Seems to be almost like they see someone different walking down the street and that's that's a target for them. Like, why why is that? Like, what what's that about? I think it's, um, it's a lot of similarities in between where they don't, they don't just arrive at a point where they, they dislike somebody because they're, they're different. Um, I think it's um, that message has been input has been imparted on, um, and I think it's quite a for for boys in particular um, challenging their masculinity, whether that comes in getting a knock back, getting rejected, whatever form that comes in. It could be as simple as go out to the shop and get told you've had too much to drink. I'm not serving you, and it might be somebody different of race who's 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 gave you that rejection, and it's quite an easy take just to insult them because they, they're different for you and the I, I always try and lean to the side I try to be understanding that they're not really at the point where they want to and, and they're saying thinking no under the influence they probably when they say that stuff um it's motivated a lot by that I'm mo motivated a lot by maybe what they're under the influence with, motivated by their peer pressure but also that rejection and that rejection might might have came from somewhere. They might have been rejected a lot in their life. And it's actually playing out in the form that's got nothing really to do with it. It's just they're hearing, no, you're not getting again. And an easy kind of um, way to insult somebody in somebody's mind like that is, is to go after what the difference is. I mean, I'm sitting here, obviously I've got ginger hair. So <laughs> if I'd slaggings all my days for Aye. having ginger hair, because it's no, it's common. It's always just kind of me and, and stuff like that. And, and um, but, it, but that was acceptable. In, in my peer group, that was socially acceptable. It was just a slagging. Where does the line stop for a slagging to actually hurting somebody? For the point where you're, you've degraded somebody and you've actually, it's been emotionally, it's affected them and mentally it's affected them. Because that's what this stuff can do. Your words can be as brutal as, as um, more brutal than your actions at times. And people don't deserve dairy to be in their work, their place of work or going about their daily, their life to, to be abused. Because it's abuse. That's what it is. Um, but I think it's a lack of education. And I think we need to challenge a message that, that young people get access to when they're at that age where they're, I suppose, like sponges and they absorb things and, and, and call it out. I know, call it out. It's an, a responsibility I've got myself. If I was to see it, witness it, and I need, to, I need to call it out. And um, if you name it, you tame it. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's not to say that you're bad and get in that corner and that shoe and give them labels as well. Getting them and having a conversation with them about it. Asking them, where did that come from? Because I think that's the situation we've all been in where yeah. like, you've been told you're not getting into a club or something. Mm. And it does, it feels personal. It feels very much like Aye. that guy just does not like you. Mm. And, and that's an area where I've, you've been there yourself where you almost want to say something that's going to hurt him as much yeah. as he's like, hurting you in that scenario. Mm. So also as well is if it's done in front of other people. Aye, of course. Be embarrassed. Yeah, you can be, and, and it's all this stuff that's uh, the underlying stuff you don't see, and it's all oh, I've got to react. You come from an environment, and you're conditioned to know have people embarrass you or 
think that you're a bam because <laughs> a lot of young yep. boys walk about that. So yep. you think I'm a dafty, you think I'm a bam, I'm going to show him. I'll no punch him, but I'll insult him. And nine times out of ten, they don't realise that that's, I can get him a criminal conviction as well. Aye. And one, it's no, it's no easy to shake off. Do you know what I mean? If you've got like a hate crime conviction on your, on your previous convictions, employers don't take too kindly employing folk like that because the law averages as you're going to work with people that are different because human beings are different. Aye. So um, if you've got that, people will judge it, judge you on that for the rest of your days. Me and Kev know exactly what that's like, especially in, in, in teenagers. They don't get, they, they don't understand what they're doing is going to have a consequence to their future events down the line. Like Callum says there about getting employment and getting that. But that word hate, you know, is, is like, you know, they're committing a crime that's getting known, known as hate crime because of just, because of form of hate towards another person through insulting them, internally hurting them from the inside through an emotion because of their emotion. And that, they, are, they think it's just like, I was just full of a drink and I was just shouting abuse and, and I walked away. Um, but that's very impactful and it'll be, it can be impactful in that young person's future. People still see what's on your convictions and they, they want you represent their organisation or whatever it may be that you're trying to do. Go abroad, go into America. They don't take too kindly to folk like that. So that's the kind of long-term uh, consequences. Um, I think that young people need to be told um, that what you do today can impact you tomorrow, can impact you next week. Um, you've went away and got on with your time and think, oh, I've showed him. I'm not a dafty. So it seems a lot like it's it's people who are hurt that are doing this. Like, mm. so what what is that actually about? Like, why is that the case? Hurt people, hurt people. So when you have internally or you you have in your life been hurt before, you'll express that, um, and that will come out in your behaviour. It will come out how you treat people. It will it will shape how you view the world actually, and how you view and perceive relationships, deal with situations. It kind of all goes back to that. It's quite a catchy thing to say. But when you look at it and you examine it and say, right, well, we've hurt people, hurt people, they were actually a victim somewhere along the line, I know. So if we can look at it for that and come at it for a two-pronged approach, whereas we're looking at, right, okay, we've got a situation where somebody has committed a crime or somebody has be, done something to insult somebody or bring somebody down, what do we need to do so that they deal with situations like that better going forward? I, I suppose it's just like how how do you stop if you're hurt and you want to hurt someone else how do you stop yourself reacting to it in that scenario the easy the easy answer to that is um, relationships right so to every question around about how you prevent or reduce violence it's, it all boils right back to relationships what does that mean it means about we young people if we're trying to educate them how to deal and manage their own stress um, the, the, how they deal with situations without becoming violent aggressive um, then we need to surround them with people that they trust and then when they've got people that they trust and people that they respect and give them role models but also provide them with the resources and create the conditions and the environments where they feel safe enough to express themselves in a healthy way and that can come through many different forms so you've got where you can actually speak to somebody and say I'm not alright today that's huge isn't it we would hope that would be the case for a 12 year old boy or a 12 year old girl but when they've never done that before, that's abnormal. And they feel again going, I'm going to be weak by telling Liam I don't feel all right today. Um, and sometimes they don't even know that they don't feel all right. So it's almost like talking through the lens of yourself as the adult or as the youth worker or as the mentor or whatever it may be that the form of the dynamic of the relationship is sharing your experiences with young people, how you dealt with situations. So a lot of my work when I was mentoring, was about I would impart my experience of how I dealt with situations and how I would no deal with them as a 31 year old when I was maybe 12, 13. And a lot of that is finding ways to express themselves. I've met young people who express themselves through acting, drama, but I've also met young people who need to go and punch a boxing bag and go and let it out that way. Because when you've got your stress response firing constantly because you've been conditioned and grew up in an environment that's been traumatic, you don't know how to switch that off. That is part of how you live. You're constantly firing cortisol in your, in your body. So you're in a heightened state. So you're not dealing with things with clarity. But they need to be taught and they need to be allowed to decompress or doze that down. And um, if we can, one, educate, through practical experiences, but two, then go, right, well, what do you do with all that pent-up aggression? I've spoke about it now and it's no shift either. I need to do something about it. And that's how 
positive engagement and kind of youth resources, um, access to sport, access to healthy pathways where young people can express themselves. And sometimes it is just about going, I'm not all right and this is why I'm not all right. It's nothing really to do with you, Liam. See, when I left the house today, I had an argument with my ma and I'm still raging, mate. Yeah, yeah. I've got resentment. They'll no talk like that. But that's where we came in and we were able to kind of unpick it with them and say, right, well, we're at the root now. What is it you need? Maybe you need just a conversation with your ma and you can start it for there rather than me insulting you when it's got nothing really to do with you. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Definitely. I think that was something growing up that I never really experienced myself. Like, I never really felt like, oh, I can go and tell somebody I'm not feeling yep. all right. I think I was lucky I found stand up at a certain age uh -huh. and that when I was still in high school and having that outlet was still like good because it meant it was just a release of everything like I could just put everything into that and that's probably kept me out of a lot of trouble so aye. Aye, it's um, regulating yourself when you're when you're feeling I mean we, we use the word hate but what is hate so you're you're, you're feeling that like you've been let down you're feeling a, maybe shame attached to that um, you're feeling these all these emotions are all running through you and, and what you do with that and if you've got a way to express it like you were talking about stand up there I mean I do a lot of kind of mindfulness and meditation now and, and young people go at me I'm no meditating <laughs> and all that it's just breathing I say yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to breathe you breathe every day there's nothing abnormal about breathing you don't need to sit like a, a Buddhist monk or anything like that we don't need to go up the top of a mountain to do it we can just do it here where you just breathe yeah, I just reiterate what Callum says there, you know, it's uh, we, we, it's all acting out on the motion, but also through the education, uh, letting young people be able to identify what they are feeling, you know, and that, and that comes because as, as young people, I certainly didn't know what I was feeling and I was acting out on it. And uh, the mere I get to understand how I feel today, you know, um, Callum spoke about meditation there, um, which is which is key, I believe, in, in you know, regulating ourselves, but also it's a practice. And every day is a practice, you know, and, and the young people, me, they'll, they'll say to me about, why they're angry or what's going on for them and that and they're talking about stuff that's happened in the past I mean I can say to them what, what's happening right now right now what's happening you know what I mean they'll go nothing it's just you're not feeling anything but you're carrying something that somebody says to you Calum spoke about like you know for instance if he's having an argument with his ma he's carrying it so sometimes we carry that emotion educating that to young people as well but you're carrying it with you and you're, and you're bringing it into the moment but if we're talking about prevention teaching this this stuff to young people at an early age how to express themselves by the way, no judging them for expressing themselves because as human beings, we've all been annoyed, we've all been angry. Yeah. These are normal feelings and emotions, but bringing somebody down because of it or hurting somebody because of it isn't it. And that's the message that we need to get to the young people today because then they'll stop doing it. Like, Kev, do you think it? How, what do you think about yeah, all yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, just, I'm going to just reiterate what uh, Callum was saying there. Uh, but I think that um, with the education side, to, to let young people uh, be able to identify what they're feeling and why they're feeling like that. So, as I said earlier, like, you can't make me angry, Liam. You can't make me angry. I, I make me angry for how I perceive what you say to me. And, and uh, is it through fear? Is it through jealousy? Is it through feeling small? But we can get into young people to let them identify what they're feeling, where it's coming from, you know, what part in their past is this bringing forward that they're feeling insulted? Is that, again, feeling the insult for the inside? Um, and again, regulating it uh, and no acting out on it. You know, how can you walk away from it? And when you walk away from it, um, not even walking away from it, but actually identifying it, dealing with it differently. You do it through comedy, you know, um, I'll do it through other other practices, camel does it. So it's about finding a tool to, to, to regulate that emotion. And actually, you grow through it. See the next time somebody insults me, I can take it. It's no sore anymore. Aye, aye. So it just seems like it's about taking that breath and then having a conversation with someone and just letting that out. Yeah. That conversation. Yeah. Kev, Cam, thanks for coming in and talking to us. It's been really enlightening. Like I definitely totally learned some stuff I had no idea about there. Like that whole stuff I hate crime. Like it's totally something that I never really got taught in school or anything. So it's all new to me. So thanks for coming in and really educating me on it. Cheers, guys. Pleasure. I get why these guys are doing this, like I get that they're trying to prove something or they're trying to vent frustrations but it's not coming from a good place is it? Like I think this is something that can be changed, like this mad energy could be put into something more productive, like because all you're doing is hurting people but especially in this time all you're really doing is hurting yourself and you don't need that right now.